What's up, everyone? Welcome to Jojo Coco Studio. I hope that intro caught your attention. Today, we're going to talk about the Cooler Master Master Case Pro 3. Now, as you may know, that this case supports mini ITX motherboards and micro ATX motherboard. I'll be doing a review and also going over the specifications and features of this PC case and also do a quick build. So let's get started. At the back of the box, Cooler Master mentions that this case is a freeform modular system. You're able to customize, adjust, and upgrade. I guess uh, in the Cooler Master website, you can buy more accessories. I saw a few interesting things. For example, you can buy a tempered glass for the side of your case, some uh, vertical expansion slots so you can show off your GPU card, and so forth. At the side of the box, we can see the specification of this PC case. Feel free to pause anytime. Now let's dig inside the box. But first, let's see what it comes with the product. It comes with the user manual, which is very, very intuitive and very clear. I really like the diagrams of this uh, user manual. It's like one of those IKEA manuals that you don't need like any description. You just look at the picture itself. Very good, very useful. We also have uh, some a bunch of screws that comes with the, the case as well. So uh, yeah, just don't lose any of these screws. We have some uh, power splitters that they that they included as well. Okay, so yeah, that's the four pin and uh, yeah, the same same. So two four pins, uh, uh, power power splitters, and then we also have some zip ties that they uh, provide as well. I think there's ten in here. Also, we have the warranty information in many different languages. And lastly, we have some uh, some some bracket shield for the fan controller. But today, I won't be using this because uh, I don't have a fan controller on my case. Okay, cool. So that's uh, what comes in the box. And check it out: the Master Case Pro Three. The dimensions of this case is 467 millimeter by 235 millimeter by 505 millimeter. It's quite big for a micro ATX case. But there's a reason for this. We'll start from the front of the case. As you can see that there's a hexagonal or honeycomb dust filter from the bottom to the top. As you can see on the rectangular top part of the honeycomb, that's where you can put in the fan controllers. On the top of the case, you'll see a nice 45 degree user interactive interface. As you can see from the left to the right, we have the hard disk indicator, USB 3.0, audio jack, microphone jack, USB 3.0 again, reset button, and the power button. And if you saw the intro in this video, you'll see that the power button has a white LED underneath. At the back of the case, we'll see a typical layout of components. We have the PSU, five expansion slot, fan ventilation that supports 120 or 140 millimeter, this case comes with a 140 millimeter fan by Cooler Master. And lastly, on the left, we have the IO area. On the top of the case, we also have another honeycomb dust filter, and we can also slide it out really easily. Let's take a quick look at the dust filter. Now, back to where we were. Here you can put two 120 or 140 millimeter fans and also a radiator, but obviously you have to install that from the inside. Looking at the bottom of the case, we can see four rubber feet and a dust filter for the PSU where we can slide it out easily and do some quick cleaning. Now let's open the side of the case. As you notice that these thumb screws are intact, so we'll never lose these. Let's look at the side panel itself. The window is mainly made out of acrylic and as you notice that the bottom part there is this black piece of acrylic where you can remove it as well. But I guess the whole point of this is to cover up your ugly PSUs. On the other side of the case, fortunately there's no window. I'll show you in a minute how cable management on this side is like. 
Next, let's take out the dust filter on the front of the case. Here you can see that Cooler Master has provided us another 140 millimeter fan. Uh, just for our information, we can install two 120 millimeter fan and two 140 millimeter fan as well. Now let's look inside the case. Here you can see that I mentioned earlier this is the 140 millimeter fan in the back of the case. We have a look at the five expansion slots from the inside. The lower compartment where we put in our PSUs and our hard disk or SSDs. The hard drive bay is also removable and adjustable. As you can see here, I can move it to the very left hand side so that there's space for maybe a longer radiator. The hard drive slot is made out of plastic. And uh, let me show you what an SSD in this slot looks like. On the shroud itself, we can put two SSDs over here. Let me show you how it looks when we put a SSD in this slot. Next to the SSDs, we have the rubber grommets. This is probably suitable for wiring the PSU cable to the GPU. The motherboard area is very well distinguished between a mini ITX and a micro ATX board. At the side of the motherboard area, we have the two rubber grommets again. This is excellent for a 24 pin power connector and other cables that connects to the motherboard. As you'll notice on the very far right, you'll see some holes and smaller holes. I guess this is for planting maybe some kind of a water cooling reservoir or a pump or anything that is very modular so we can play around with this case. Let's look at the other side of the case. Here we can see that Cooler Master has neatly tucked in the wires for us. At the end of the wires, we have a silica gel. So I guess uh, it controls the humidity when shipping. Uh, we have the usual USB 3.0 connector. These power switch, reset switch, LED lights and hard drive LEDs. And also the HD audio. Last but not least, before I do a quick build, the Velcro straps are very, very useful for cable management. So all in all, this case is really awesome to build in. I think if you're a first time builder or maybe you're beginning to build a PC, this is a pretty good option because it seems that it's very spacious, cable management is really easy, and also we can upgrade so much more in the future. If you notice in the build, I used a non-modular PSU, which of course there's so many cables, but in the end, I've managed to just stuff it underneath the shroud and it just seems to just disappear. Well guys, unfortunately we have come to an end. If you enjoyed the video, please press the like button or subscribe as well. If you don't, you know what to do. But thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments below. See you later guys. Bye.